Hi, I'm Mrs. Ruth Alawadu of Rukia Style. Today, I will be taking you through the art of tie and dye, batik baking, painting of fabric, marbling, resist technique, and just to name a few. This practice is actually done only in Africa. It has been practiced years ago in Indonesia, in India, and some other continents of the world. However, in Nigeria, where I come from, most especially in the western part and Kano, there is unique way this practice has been done from ancient times. Some of the ideas we are going to incorporate in our lessons, and some of other techniques from other parts of the world we are also going to add. Well, I hope you'll be able to follow me through the process of adding color and adding beauty to your fabric that will make it uniquely yours. So have fun while you follow me through the tutorials in Adire making as it's called in western part of Nigeria or tie and dye. The tie and dye process, batik processing, resist method and other methods I'm going to show you. There are some materials and tools you will need. Here I have to show you an array of beautiful fabrics that have been tied and dyed, batik, marbled and so on and so forth. First here is a chiffon that I've been tie dyed. You see the process of making a pattern like this. This is also a chiffon. You can see how beautiful the rainbow color. And here we have the marbling technique we have been used as the marble technique. Here is the folding technique has been applied to create this design. This is the Adire Leko, mainly for the western part of my country, Nigeria. And you can see they are beautifully done, and I will also show you the technique concerning that one. And you can see my outfit is actually made from the indigo dye technique, the Adire Leko. And also this is another chiffon where the resist tech was also made using a template with the candle wax. And sometimes you can use the cassava face to achieve this. This is also the resist technique. You can see how beautiful the design is. And this multiple type is application of several techniques, both the resist motif dye and spray technique to create this multiple design and this one also which I have here is also taking an idea from the Adira Leko to create this but you can see the design is multiple and I will show you how this is done. Now I'm going to show you the different tools, just general tools you will need. Some of them you know already, some of them you can get from craft and art shop. And you can even online shop for them, go to your local market or supermarket. For the different technique, as I expose you to the different methods and technique for tie and dye, batik painting, uh, resist method, I'll be showing you also at each stage what tools you need for each demonstration but this is just a general intro so from here before me here what i have here is the paraffin wax it's just like your regular candle it's just that they are, uh, they are made for 
resist, it's melted, and that's what you use to draw your motifs on the fabric, and you will see it later. So it's your ordinary candle. So if you can't get this, you can get a, a, a pack of candle, but make sure it's not colored, and you use. Before we hear, it's a nose mask. Because of the kind of chemicals we'll be using, caustic soda, sulfide, they are dangerous to human inhalation. So you need to protect your nose so that you will not inhale that because if you do that, it's dangerous to your health. So they are cheap to get, something you can get from any hard, uh, hardware store or any of your local shop around you or craft shop. Also, you need different sizes of brushes. So you can see I have the 4 inch brush, 3 inch, 2 inch, I have the one and a half and the one inch. And I also have the artist uh, brush. These I'm going to use when I'm applying my wax. And sometimes, like this one, when I start using my dye to draw patterns directly on my fabric, it's going to be interesting. You know? Also, for the tie and dye process, you may need a twine like this, like what I have in my hand, a twine or a yarn, the wool that they use for knitting. You can use that one to do your tie. So the area you tie, dye cannot penetrate and it creates your design. Also, to do your tie and dye, you can use the raffia. This one is very peculiar to the African region too. So which we use here in the western part of uh, Nigeria. So you can use the raffia. And also to draw your designs, you need the tailor's chalk. You can use the tailor's chalk or a water-soluble pen. But I would advise use the tailor's chalk because once you wash the fabric, in the process of dyeing, after you finish your dyeing, and you have to remove the wax or the dye to rinse, it will, it will rub off, but you can use this to trace out whatever design you want on your fabric. Also, you need hand sewing needles. You can see some already threaded with the baby wool. Because one other resist technique is actually sewing some design pattern, either straight or zigzag on your fabric. And by the time you pull and insert in your dye bit, it gives you a beautiful design. As, apart from hand sewing needle, you can also use hand sewing machine. Uh -huh. Also, the hand glove, which will help to protect your fingers from stains and the effect of caustic soda and hydrosulfate. You can also get things from uh, your environment. Some drinks like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Montana, or Montes, or Amstel. Any of those ones that you normally take, you can store them for future use, as you see in the demonstration that will follow. So for batik, to create designs for batik, you have cap phones already. So you can you can carve your designs on foams, like sire phones, as you can see, or you can carve them on wood. Somebody, an artist, to help you to carve them, or you can create your own stencil. Carve them, and this foam is what we dip into the melted wax. Remember the wax I showed you before, and you place on your fabric and you created your design. Right now, with modernization, artists now carve foams into the foam shape of a pencil tip, and they dip this, this in wax, melted wax, and use it to draw their design direct on fabric as a form of resist technique. Next, I'll be showing you the different dye, the chemicals that you will need. Actually, you have some cold water dye and some hot water dye. And lately, we've had the industrial dye, which they call VAT dye in this part of my country. And on, before me here, I have the Dylon dye, which 
come in various color. And if you look at the bottles in front of me, uh, they, these are the actual dye base, but with lighter colors. So these are the Dylon dye. And Dylon dye, in most cases, all you need is a basic common salt. And uh, you'll be able to work something with it. However, for a more pronounced color, you need the VAT dye. And the VAT dye, I can see, you cannot actually tell what is the color of the dye. You can only tell the color of the dye when it has been oxidized, when oxygen has gone through it. And you now start seeing the actual color of the dye. So here, it may be looking like brown, but by time, but when you have finished dyeing and you have heard it, it will come out as yellow. So you cannot really tell. But for the dylon dye, the colors are already placed by the company on the dye. Also, you notice that I have some of the dye not just in the bottles in front of me, but also in plastic dispensers that can spray. We call them spray bottles in this part of the world. So you can just get your old spray bottles from insecticide, uh, uh, from your, your window cleaner, your everyday cleaning agent. After you finish it, don't dispose them off. They will come in handy. Like what I've mixed here is Dylon dye. So I can easily attach it, you know, as you will see later in my demonstration and create my designs also, the spray technique. For you to have a dye that will fast, because you can just dye, if you don't add some setting reagent, the dye will not stick to the fabric and after the first wash, it's gone. So you need to add some reagent, like the caustic soda. The caustic soda actually it's like granulated sugar, but it's, as the name implies, it's caustic because it's acidic. Why the sulfur, hydrosulfide also makes the color stick. So you need this too. But if you can't get the hydrosulfide, in the case of dialon, if you are using dialon, you can use the common salt for it. So but for each demonstration, I'll be telling you quantities you will need for your diabetes. And here, you can see some colors have attempted to dye, but this one is from the Dylon dye. And you can see the effect. After oxidation, you can see the effect of the fabric. 